So this is uh, the mastaba. You can see one mastaba over the second mastaba. This is how a pyramid or step pyramid is in the process of being built. And this is step pyramid. And this is another pyramid which is in very, very bad shape. This is a very clear example of a step pyramid. But in the process, there also came a time when the one, one mastaba was overlapped by a pyramidal shape. And this generated yet another kind of uh, pyramid, which is known as the bent pyramid. There are not many examples of this kind of pyramid. There are not many kind of example of step pyramid either, but most of the pyramids are in the shape of the true pyramids. This is a closer view of the same step pyramid at Rosa, and there is a temple also attached close to it. Now this is the true pyramid, which uh, we see in this picture. This, is, this has become a very strong tourist uh, spot. Every day, thousands of people visit this place from all over the world. And I had, to I had a chance to visit this place a number of times. And so I had very close uh, study of this pyramid and some of the elements which I noticed at that time. They were quite alarming, never told in the books, never said in the books, or never told by the experts. But when you go to the site actually, then you start the real process of learning. But one, uh, one thing uh, I have learned from my life is this, that uh, when, if you want to learn, you must travel by road, never travel by, by air, never travel by sea. But if you want to learn about the civilizations, best thing is to travel by road. So whenever I am invited to some area for study, for example, once or uh, twice I was invited to Iran, so Iran ne kaha ya by air travel karenge from one place to another in Iran, or you will try like to travel by train or what is what would you like. So I I had I was with a group, so we all said that we would like to travel by road. So usme road ka ye hai ki jab koi cheez aa jaye, koi magbara aa jaye, koi important place aa jaye, ruk jaye, usko study karne ke liye. So that is very important. So recently I had a trip with my students to Khanjarab. Now traveling to Khanjarab is so is. So, kya kena so knowledgeable. Such a kind of knowledge you come across, particularly in the field of geology, and you will come across hundreds of mountains or rocks. Each rock has a different character. So, rocks to study or what is the character of these rocks and what nature has given to us, but we are not utilizing it. Anyway, coming back to our study. The climatic factor is that um, in uh, Egypt, there is a river which flows, but flows. this river flows uh, flows very quietly all over the year. But during the step, September, October, and November, three months, there is a flood in this river. And when there is a flood in this river, the river overflows from its banks and spread into larger areas. For example, in this picture, if this is the river, when the flood comes, it can go to this area and go to this area. And when the water subsides, these areas become very fertile. So that fertile area, which is known as technically known as alluvial, so after every flood, the people of ancient Egypt used to indulge in agriculture. And they specialized in a quite few kind of uh, agriculture. They were very good at harvesting wheat and very good at harvesting rice. And they were very good at growing the vineyards, and also the other fruits also. So they were expert in these things. So they were quite knowledgeable. And when we come to other civilization, for example, we go to the like Bethel Makdasko study the, the famous Aksa Mosque, study the Doom of the Rock, and study the background of the Doom of the Rock. So then we learned that how uh, educated in their own sense they were, they were the people at that time. And they could uh, harvest anything which they liked and they know, knew how to get the maximum of the, out of the harvest. So this is uh, what the Egyptians were doing after every flood. They used to indulge in agriculture. And when the agriculture was over, the yield was gathered, then they started building the pyramids. And then uh, while, while they were building the pyramids, uh, they had, normally all of the nation was involved in the construction of the pyramid because they thought the, the service or the building of the pyramid or the practice of the building of the pyramid is like a worship of the pharaoh. 
So there were no money was paid to these workers, nothing, no wages, no nothing. Still, they work from morning to evening on these pyramids, and they continue to build it, and they continued with this process. And when these people were at war with the enemies, you see, they were the great fighters also. And it is a very amazing that in one time in history, these Egyptian pharaohs had gone as far as Jerusalem. Jerusalem, you know, conquered Kali at the time. And if we if we study the scrolls of the ancient Egyptians, to us me Jerusalem ka naam me milta hai, but with a slightly different pronunciation and slightly different spellings. So, matlab they are very forceful people. So, the, my point was when they were fighting against the enemies. At one stage in history, the number of the prisoners of war became so large that it exceeded the actual population of the Egyptians. The only Egyptian population if it's over, so prisoner of war do so again. So that became a problem. So, but that again caused them a kind of boost for the construction of the pyramid and so on. So all these prisoners of war were also subjected to the construction of the pyramid. This area at top of the river. This, this, is in the, yeah. this is in the form of a triangle. This technically or geographically, this triangle of water is known as delta, as you see here. So this is the Nile Delta. Every, every river, when it is falling in the sea or in the ocean, it spreads out like this. So that may, the river makes a triangle like this. And that triangle is known as the delta of the river. And it falls into the river, which is known as Mediterranean Sea. So the reason is it is the medi between and terrain two lands. Mediterranean means which is situated between two lands. That's why it is known as Mediterranean. One land is here, and one land is above over here. So it's known as the Mediterranean Sea. So Isra jitne naam hai, most of the names of the seas are very related to the. For example, there is a sea which is known as Dead Sea. So sea is a dead or reason. So you try to find out why that sea is known as a dead sea. Sea you get a red sea, why that is known as a red sea. So there are reasons. So when we are studying, we are trying to find out the reasons for this, that is the etymology and that is the lust for knowledge. So graduate level. But when you go to MPhil or PhD level, inshallah, so you will see that the going and digging the knowledge is the most important factor in the research. So the in the coastal region, average annual temperature ranges from maximum 37. 37 is not very high if you compare to our land, to a minimum of 14 degrees, because in the desert at night it becomes very, very cold. That shows the wide variations of temperature occur in the desert, ranging from a maximum of 46 during the day and falling down to six centigrade after the sunset. So that is normal in every desert. The ancient Egyptian uh, thought of Egypt as being divided into two types of land, the black land and the red land. The black land was the fertile land on the banks of the Nile River, yes, every man have to explain here, the, when the river overflow, overflowed during the flood season. So that uh, land became very fertile after the water had subsided. So that area was known as the black land. I don't know why this is known as black land. By the what is the reason? But they call it black land. And the, the second area, which was the desert area, that was known as the red land. So the Egypt, Egypt was divided into these two colors also. The red land was the barren desert that protected Egypt on two sides. So it's not about the desert. And this is picture, which is from the, the pyramids on inside from the pyramid showing people very busy in harvesting the vineyard. Vineyard is that place where Jahangur room ki bailey hoti hai. So if you, you see, if you, if you know the something, some psychology of the trees or psychology of the grapes, so grapes have many qualities. These are one of the, the gifts of Allah. And we are, when we are in paradise, inshallah, so we will have grapes also there. Besides many other things like banana and pomegranate and anjir. So both say as a tune. So sub in paradise may have. But one of the most important thing is this angur. So angur is good because uh, good for health and good for making wine. When the expert 
in the science of making, making fine, this man is preparing wine with the help of these uh, angur. And after having making the wine, they stored it into these jars. So that was another element of their agriculture. And they also indulge in various kind of uh, harvesting and agriculture. They can plowing and is been and they are using all sort of instruments for the cultivation. So that means that they were quite versatile in their various aspects. And the ancient Egyptians, uh, they also excelled in making or the growth or the rearing of the animals, particularly for the sake of meat. They loved the meat of the poultry, that is the hens and uh, things like that, pea fowls, etc., etc. And also they indulge in the cutting or the zabakarna of the animals. So they, these are the, their favorite hobbies and favorite business. These persons are busy making the, cutting the swan, for the purpose of cooking. Coming to the social factors, they use these symbols for the sake of rising, for the sake of writing. Now, for a very long time, these symbols are also known as uh, hieroglyphics. When you say hieroglyphics, uh, hiero means the king or the emperor or the ruler, and glyphic simply means a symbol. So when we say hieroglyphics, they mean the symbol of the kings and queens and uh, the rulers, because uh, they were mostly used for these people. So for a long time, these hieroglyphics were remained uh, in illegible. But then the number of people has remained busy in the study of Egyptology, the science of uh, Egyptian knowledge. So research and ultimately they have been able to find out that this word, uh, this word means A, and this leg means B, and this, this means W, and so on. So they were able to dig out the meaning of these words, at least they close, close closer to the meaning of these words. For example, we put A in a different way, they put A in this form, we put B in a different way, they put B in this form, our G is different, their G is like this. But they don't call it G, they call it in their own language, which is the ancient Egyptian language. But the sound was like G, and the sound was like A, and sound was like B, and so on. So this, is, this happened in all other languages. For example, in Arabic, the A is like Aleph and the B is like Ba. Arabic means usko Ba kehte hain, Farsi or Urdu mein usko Be kehte hain. So these variation in the uh, sound ki pronunciation hai, usme ye changes aa jati hain aur hoti bhi hain. When we, when in Arabic or Arabi, Arabi jo banda hai, wo Arabi paad raha hai, to wo Quran ko aurta padta hai, jab haam padte hain, haam aurta ra padte hain. हम रमजान कहते हैं वो रमदान कहते हैं तो ये प्रोनंसिएशन की जो वेरिएशंस हैं ये होती रहती हैं तो दैट शुडंट बॉदर तो आप कभी ये कुरान पढ़ते हुए आप ये ना सोचें कि ये रमदान को मैं अगर रमजान कह रहा हूं तो ये गलत है दिस इज ओन प्रोनंसिएशन एज लॉन्ग एज यू आर रीडिंग इट करेक्टली विद अ परफेक्ट नियत जो आप जिसको आप नियत कहते हैं ये ऐसे मेरे ज़हन में एक सवाल और आ गया कि नियत जो है इज इट द वर्ड इज नियत है या नियत है आपका क्या ख्याल है लेकिन इसको नियत कैसे बन गई जैसे वर्ड बिदा है वो बिदत कैसे बन गई तो ये जो चेंजेस आ गई वट इज द रीजन ऑफ दिस चेंजेस क्यों है मैं बताता हूँ आपको जैसे हमने कहा निया तो निया की स्पेलिंग जो है अरबी में नी नून ये और आखिर में ए, ए है लेकिन ए के ऊपर दो नुकते हैं अरबिक थ्री काइंड एक हे वो है जो हलवे वाली है एक हे वो है जो गोल है एक तीसरी हे है जो गोल भी है और ऊपर दो नुकते भी हैं अब चूंकि निया जो है दो नुकते वाली हे पे खत्म होती है तो उसको कुछ लोगों ने नीयत बना लिया तो उस तरह ये नीयत बन गई और बिदा से बिदत बन गई तो और बहुत से लफ्ज इस तरह चेंज हो गए फ्रॉम अरेबिक टू उर्दू और अरेबिक टू पर्शियन एंड सो ऑन जैसे असल लफ्ज तो जन्ना है जन्नत नहीं है तो जन्ना के एंड में भी दो तो ते है दो रुपये वाली है तो वो जन्नत बन गई तो दिस इज दीज आर द रीजन तो फिर इसी से 
I asked you yet another question. के वो जो कुरान शरीफ जब हम पढ़ते हैं ना तो हर आया के एंड में एक दायरा सा बड़ा होता है वो दायरा क्यों होता है दायरा की जगह चकोर क्यों नहीं होती या कोई एक्सगन क्यों नहीं होती कोई ऑक्टेगन क्यों नहीं होती कोई फूल क्यों नहीं होता वाई दैट दायरा दैट थे दैट हे एक्चुअली विद द साउंड ऑफ थे वॉज लाइक ए पीरियड पीरियड मीन फुल स्टॉप तो फुल स्टॉप का मतलब कि यहाँ आपने रुकना है यू हैव टू स्टॉप ये तो वो एक्चुअली आया के एंड में वो तेल डाली जाती थी गोल करके ऊपर नुकते भी होते थे तो ग्रेजुअली वो नुकते गायब हो गए सिर्फ वो दायरा रह गया इसलिए आया के एंड में वो सर्कल आता है अब नाउ द नदर क्वेश्चन इज के आया के एंड पे जो सर्कल तो आता है तो वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ आया आया क्या कहते आया क्या चीज है आया भी ऐसी है असल में जिसको आयत बन गई तो आया भी ऐसी है वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ एन आया सर सर जहाँ पे सर वक्फा लेते हैं तो एक बात है नहीं वो तो हमने सर्कल डिस्कस कर लिया आया का क्या मतलब आयत जिसे आप आयत कहते हैं सर एक सेंटेंस पे कंप्लीट सर सर निशानी के लिए क्या होता है जैसे एक निशानी होती है उसको कहते हैं आयत जी बिल्कुल आपने सही कहा कि आयत का मतलब ही निशानी है जो जितनी आयत हैं वो सब निशानियां हैं अल्लाह की बिल्कुल आपने सही कहा आयत का जो लुगवी मैना है द रियल मीनिंग इज निशानी और दूसरा लफ्ज होता है सूरत जिसको एक्चुअली सूरा है लफज तो वो है जैसे चैप्टर ऑफ दी कुरान तो ये बेसिक चीज़ें हैं जो आपको आनी चाहिए और यही चीज़ें हैं वेन ए टीचर इज टीचिंग यू इट शुड यू इट शुड गिव यू मोर देन वट दल टॉपिक इज तो हमारा टॉपिक तो इजिप्शन सिविलाइजेशन है हम जो इधर उधर जो चलते चले जाते हैं टू फाइंड आउट द मीनिंग ऑफ अदर वर्ड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो दीज आर द हायर मोर सम मोर हायरोग्लिफिक्स यू कैन सी देम हियर फादर वाज डिपिक्टेड बाय नंबर ऑफ दीस पिक्चर्स पुट टुगेदर मदर वाज डिपिक्टेड बाय लाइक दिस नंबर ऑफ पिक्चर्स पुट टुगेदर तो ये बड़ा मुश्किल लिखना बड़ा मुश्किल हो गया सिर्फ अगर ने फादर ही लिखना है तो चार पांच तस्वीरें बनाए तो वो फादर बनेगा चार पांच तस्वीरें बनाए तो मदर बनेगी तो राइटिंग वाज क्वाइट डिफिकल्ट एट दैट टाइम You see, writing became very difficult even till the time of the Romans. So Roman ne A B C D to likhna si strictly, lekin wo ginti nahi likh sakte, number nahi likh sakte, ek do, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten nahi likh sakte. So they they resorted to use the I for one, two I for two, and three I for three, then V for five, and X for ten, and L for fifty, and C for hundred, and M for one thousand. So isra wo they were using the alphabets for the numbers. तो उनको लिखने में तो बड़ी परेशानी हुई क्योंकि द द आर्ट और द साइंस ऑफ द नंबर्स इज इज समथिंग व्हिच इज वेरी रीसेंट तो एट द एंड ऑफ अभी भी कुछ घड़ियां आप देखेंगे उनके ऊपर रोमन लेटर लिखे होते हैं जहां पांच होता है वहां वी पड़ी होती है जहां टेन होता है वहां एक्स पड़ा होता है नाउ इफ यू हैव ए एक्स एंड यू पुट आई ऑन द राइट साइड इट इज 11 इफ यू पुट एक्स एंड यू पुट आई ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड इट इज 9 सो ये वेरी बिकेम वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू रीड एंड राइट Nevertheless, when it, the, when the zero was discovered, things became much easier, and one, two, three, four, five became easy to write. So these are the hieroglyphics, the numbers, or the symbols of the, the pharaohs. And the writing with the help of picture was also known as pictography. That is the help of writing with the help of the pictures. That is known as the pictography. Then the another thing which with which the ancient Egyptian civilization. excelled but the matter they were expert in this science and that was the science of reflexology ab aap mujhe bataye ki what is reflexology aapke class mein bahut si ladkiyan bhi hongi particularly my question is addressed to the ladies in the class what is reflexology it is a type of massage sort of treatment like massage which yeah. relieves pain or anxiety yeah sir matter relaxation se related jo unki information thi sir हमारे पैरों के अंदर कुछ पॉइंट्स होते हैं जो हमारे डिफरेंट बॉडी पार्ट्स के साथ लिंक करते हैं मतलब डिफरेंट ऑर्गन के साथ और उस पॉइंट पे वो पुश करके उनको रिलैक्सेशन देते हैं ताकि फूड के थ्रू हम लोग बाकी बॉडी पार्ट्स को एक हीलिंग प्रोवाइड कर सके बिल्कुल आपने बिल्कुल आपने सही कहा यू सी दे टू पार्ट इन दॉडी वन इज दीट और फुट दूर हैंड और हैंड्स तो इन दोनों में देर आर सोर्सेज एज एलेक्जर और एंटीडोट 
और ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ वेरियस प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ ह्यूमन बॉडी तो किसी जगह से पाँव को दबाएं तो आपके परेशानी दूर हो जाती है किसी जगह से हाथ को दबाएं तो परेशानी दूर हो जाती है बॉडीली परेशानी जहनी नहीं तो दिप्शन बिलीव दैट द केयर ऑफ हैंड्स एंड केयर ऑफ फीट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो दे एक्सेल्ड इन दीज टू फील्ड so that is reflexology and this is one of the pictures from the one of the buildings or one of the temples the lady is busy treatment treating a person by pressing certain parts of the foot now this is the hierarchy in the social setup of the egyptians the pharaohs were at top pharaohs were not one person or two person it was a group of people then at number 2 we had the government officials nobles and priests Number three were the scribes and soldiers. Then we had the middle class. Then they were peasants, and then they were slaves or the prisoners of war. So, this type of society was being governed. And in certain cases, the pharaohs were also the very, very religious persons also, <coughs> and they controlled everything. Now, the history of ancient Egypt spans the period from the early prehistoric settlements of the north, uh, northern. Nile Valley to the Roman conquest in 30 BC. The frowning period is dated from 3200 BC, when Upper and Lower Egypt were unified until the country fell under the Macedonian rule in 332. <coughs> Now this slide has some question in it. जो मैं आपसे पूछूँगा, what is the Macedonian rule? What is where is Macedonia? Do you know any person from Macedonia? But I'm a famous man from Macedonia. Alexander. Yes. Well, Alexander was not from Greece. He was from yeah. Macedon. So now this, uh, when I talk, when you say Alexander, see, Alexander became a student of uh, a philosopher, and who was that philosopher? Aristotle. Aristotle. Achha, Now Aristotle, uh, Aristotle was a scholar and a polymath. Polymath, you have heard what is a polymath? Polymath is a person who is expert in many many fields. Both the work that he does. Today, one person does one thing. The expert of history is expert. The doctor 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 is expert. Islamic history means there are many polymaths: Ibn Hisham, Ibn Rushd, Abu Rehan. Sir, these were the polymaths, very important. Now, Aristotle was a polymath. What he believed was that uh, number one, that he believed if you want to learn something, you should sit in the open garden. Me bat ke pade, garden me bat ke learn kare. So Aristotle established his school in a garden. And he said that चलते फिरते पढ़े ये नहीं कि बैठे हुए बैठे हुए हैं उठ के खड़े होकर जोड़े एक्सरसाइज भी साथ साथ करें सो ही इंट्रोड्यूस ए नॉलेज द मेथड ऑफ अर्बन लाइफ एक्सरसाइज भी साथ साथ करें सो ही इंट्रोड्यूस ए नॉलेज द मेथड ऑफ अर्निंग नॉलेज वो कहते हैं अगर आपने नॉलेज अर्न करना है तो देन यू शुड नर्न यू शुड इंडल्ज इन ए काइंड ऑफ एक्टिविटी विच इज नोन एज जिमनो जी वाई एम एन ओ इस लफ्ज को आप याद रखें जी वाई एम एन ओ the philosopher was a great uh, professor a great preacher of gymno okay so learn karna if you want to learn something you must indulge in the gymno and what was gymno he said gymno is that you are doing some kind of physical exercises some kind of physical exercise without any clothes on your body so wo jo aap exercise kar rahe hain without any clothes on your body in open air that is the gymno तो इसी जिमनों से लफ्ज बन गया जिमनेजियम तो अब जिमनेजियम में तो ओपन नहीं होता ना ही हम कपड़े उतारते हैं थोड़े से उतारते हैं तो दैट इज दरिजन ऑफ द जिमनेजियम अब देखें इस तरह दैट इज दैट इज द एटेमोलॉजी ऑफ द जिमनेजियम नो कमिंग टू द अलेक्जेंडर एंड एरिस्टोटल एरिस्टोटल बिलीव इन वन थिंग वेरी क्लियरली ही सेड दैट ऑल स्टूडेंट्स आर नॉट इन्फीरियर टू हिज टीचर ही सेड सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स आर ऑलवेज बेटर देन हिज टीचर some students are always better than his teacher and sometimes the teacher is learning from his students to ye mujhe this like uh, total ka jo dialogue hai when i was doing my phd my supervisor with one of the most famous person in the state of architecture 
रॉबर्ट हेलन ब्रैंड उसका नाम है कभी आप रॉबर्ट हेलन ब्रैंड टाइप करें आपकी वेबसाइट पे तो देखेंगे हाउ मेनी बुक्स ही रिटन ऑन इस्लामिक आर्किटेक्चर व्हाट अ ग्रेट पर्सन ही इज नॉर्मली अपीयर्स ऑन बीबीसी विद रिलेशन टू द हिस्ट्री ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर पर्टिकुलरली इस्लामिक आर्किटेक्चर तो दैट वाज मैं कह रहा था जब मैं अपने सुपरवाइजर के साथ बैठ के पढ़ रहा होता था तो कोई ऐसा लफ्ज आ जाता था जो मुझे पता होता था उसको नहीं पता होता था तो वो कहता था शौकत आई एम लर्निंग फ्रॉम यू तो आई यूज टू फील वेरी प्राउड तो द गुड टीचर इज दैट वो इज ऑलवेज ओपन टू लर्न फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट्स तो ये बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है एंड टीचर मस्ट ऑलवेज ट्राई टू मेक सर्टन स्टूडेंट सो सो एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी दैट दे बिकम लार्जर देन हिज टीचर एट द एंड ऑफ द लाइफ फॉर एग्जाम्पल Not many people know who was Alexander. Not many people know who was Aristotle. So, yeah, Aristotle का शागिर था, Aristotle की teaching थी, जिसने Alexander को इतना बड़ा बना दिया. But the but the Aristotle writes in his own memoirs. कि जब ये Alexander मेरे पास आया, तो मैंने देखा थे पांच फुट का बंदा है, शर्मिला सा, जो लड़कियों से शर्माता है, इसने क्या पढ़ना है और क्या करना है? और दुबला भी है बड़ा. But then it was the training, his training. जो इसने उसको अलेक्जेंडर से अलेक्जेंडर द ग्रेट बना दिया तो हम नॉर्मल ये ग्रेट का लफ्ज़ यूज़ नहीं करना चाहिए किसी के साथ भी अगर हम प्रॉफिट के साथ ग्रेट का लफ्ज़ यूज़ नहीं करते ग्रेट इज ओनली अल्लाह तो ये जस्ट अलेक्जेंडर इज अनफ तो उसको देखें कहाँ ले गया वो देन स्टार्टेड कंकरिंग द होल वर्ल्ड एंड बाई द एज ऑफ थर्टी सेवन दी एज कंकर ऑलमोस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड तो थर्टी सेवन के बाद तो उसकी डेथ ही हो गई बीमारी पड़ गया मर गया एनी वे दैट वॉज द टीचिंग ऑफ रिस्टोटल for alexander was transformed into a soldier of great power and great strength and great energy to supervise or to control an army so that is what is the what is the outcome of a good teacher ab main aapko ek aur cheez batau ke lahore mein ek school hai lyceum so what is a lyceum to so, main ek dafa mujhe as a chief guest bula liya lyceum walon ne तो मेरे साथ उनकी हेडमिस्टर बैठी हुई थी मैंने कहा आपने नाम बड़ा अच्छा रखा है लाइसियम कि ये आपका कैसे ख्याल आ गया तो कहने लगी जी बस हमें ऐसे ही पसंद आ गया नाम तो हमने रख लिया शी वॉज अनएबल टू टेल मी बट द लाइसियम वॉज द गार्डन वेयर आर स्टोटल यूज टू सिट एंड टीच हिज स्टूडेंट्स द गार्डन ऑफ लाइसियम इज द गार्डन ऑफ अरिस्टोटल वॉज नोन एज लाइसियम तो ये पता ही नहीं हम लोगों को तो नाम रख लेते हैं लाइसियम पता ही नहीं है क्या है लाइसियम क्या चीज So that garden where he used to teach his students was known as Lyceum. So that garden has now known as now known as the center of learning. So this background, and now the Macedon is the province at the top of the, in the north of Greece. So Alexander belonged to this place, and from Macedon he came down to Greece, and where he became a student of Aristotle. And that is so. and we have also aristotle which is known as aristotle of norovar aapko pata hi hoga 